Hello and welcome everyone to today's video in which we will answer the question what is computational neuroscience? So without further ado, let's begin the video. In 1985, Eric L. Squartz organized a conference in Carmel, California at the request of the Systems Development Foundation to provide a summary of the current status of a field which, until that point, was referred to by a variety of names such as Neural Modeling, Brain Theory and Neural Networks. It was for the first time in this conference that Eric L. Squartz introduced the terminology computational neuroscience. In his book, The Fundamentals of Computational Neuroscience, researcher Thomas Trappenberg defined computational neuroscience as the theoretical study of the brain used to uncover the principles and mechanisms guiding the development, organization, information processing and mental abilities of the nervous system. Computational neuroscience, also referred to as theoretical or mathematical neuroscience, is a branch of neuroscience employing mathematical models as approximations of cognitive functioning and neural mechanisms and therefore it spends and focuses a lot of its attention on the development and evaluation of these mathematical models. Furthermore, the field simulates these models using computer simulations and finally this field uses theoretical analysis and abstractions of the brain to understand the principles governing the development, structure and physiology and cognitive abilities of the nervous system. The term computational also stresses that the field is interested in particular in the computations or the mechanisms and processes underlying the information processing aspects of the brain functions. Therefore, many and most of the models developed in this field try to approximate these mechanistic and process-based aspects of the brain. Although computational neuroscience is theoretical by its very nature, it is important to bear in mind that the models established in this particular field must be gauged on the basis of experimental data. These models are otherwise useless for understanding the brain. Only experimental measurements of the real brain can verify what exactly the brain does. In contrast to the experimental domain, computational neuroscience tries to speculate how the brain operates or the computations and processes underlying its operations. Such speculations are developed then into hypotheses realized into the mathematical models which are evaluated either analytically or numerically and then tested against the experimental data. Additionally, mathematical models from this field can also be used to make further predictions about more in-depth underlying phenomena of interest. Ideally, the goal is to integrate experimental facts across different levels of investigations into a coherent mathematical model of how the brain works or how the particular phenomena of interest unfolds. It is important to acknowledge that this field is highly interdisciplinary in nature. Important experimental inputs into computational neuroscience comes from the fields of neuroanatomy such as morphology and functional connectivity of the brain along with different brain structures. Furthermore, data from the fields of neurophysiology that focus on the behavior of single cell neurons is also a very important area. Psychology as a field also informs this field of computational neuroscience by the data that is derived from experiments looking at 
the behavior of humans as well as psychophysical experiments. Computational neuroscientists also use the quantitative sciences such as mathematics to build these computational models and use approximations from the fields of physics and the methodologies from computer science and analyses from statistics. Investigations of hypotheses with the aid of these mathematical models leads to the specific predictions that then have to be verified experimentally. This is an iterative process. These predictions further allow us the refinement of the mathematical models and this goes on until and unless the field arrives at a good enough solution that gives us a good understanding of the brain and its phenomena of interest. The comparison of model predictions with experimental data is also used to refine the hypotheses and develop more accurate models or even models that can shed light on the different phenomena of interest. In the last part of the video, we'd like to leave you with the prerequisites of the fields one needs to have a working knowledge of or a good grasp of in order to comprehend and understand the research undertaken in the field of computational neuroscience. We identify that there are three key elements or three key areas one needs to have a good working knowledge in in order to learn computational neuroscience or understand the research undertaken in this field. The first key element or the key area is mathematics, the second being neuroscience and the third being programming and coding and or computer science. Understanding mathematics is absolutely crucial in order to understand the research undertaken in computational neuroscience because the entire field is based on propounding, developing and postulating mathematical models. Specifically, the fields of linear algebra, calculus, inferential statistics and probability are good starting points that will allow you to understand most of the models that this particular field posits. Furthermore, a good grasp and understanding of neuroscience is crucial. Remember, computational neuroscience is a subfield of neuroscience. Therefore, knowing your basics in biology and neuroscience underlying the brain is absolutely crucial. We specifically recommend learning more about molecular neuroscience, topics in cognitive neuroscience, and cognition and cognitive psychology more broadly. Finally, one of the most important aspects of this field is being able to simulate and write code in order to understand the dynamics of the computational models or the mathematical models that approximate the cognitive functions. In order to be able to do that, good knowledge of programming and coding is absolutely crucial. Some of the most common programming languages that are used in this field and therefore that you can learn in order to get a good grasp of the inner workings of the mathematical models include the fields of Python, MATLAB and R. Of course, this list is not exhaustive and that many other programming languages are also used, but this will be a good place to start. If you haven't subscribed yet, do not forget to subscribe to Brain Cyclopedia, leave a like, share this video and invite others who might like to join Brain Cyclopedia and benefit from us. Comment down below and let us know your feedback and press the bell icon to stay updated with new uploads. Join our growing community of online learners by following our social media platforms on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Follow us on buymeacoffee.com and support us with your donations. The links of all of these sites will be given in the description box below. See you in our next video.